Okay, in today's video, we are going to go over the energy needed to put this satellite, this telecommunication satellite, into geostationary orbit above the Earth. Now, before we do that, I just want to go and talk a minute about how that satellite was actually launched into space. And it was launched by a company called Sea Launch, and they are called Sea Launch because that's right, they launch things from sea. And this is their facility in Long Beach, California. Here's the ship from which they monitor their sea launches, and here is the platform from which they launch their sea launches. And you can see one of their rockets right here. Sea launch, this is a Zenit rocket, it's a Russian rocket, and then the satellite would be up in the nose cone of that rocket. Now, they don't launch them right there from Long Beach, California. They actually take that launch platform and they drive it out to the middle of the ocean, and then they set it up in the middle of the ocean, and then they get the rocket ready, and then they launch that rocket from their sea launch platform right there in the middle of the ocean. Now the question is why do they take that launch platform and drive it all the way out there from Long Beach, California to the middle of the ocean? Well, it's not really the middle of the ocean and they take it out to the equator. And they take it out to the equator because the equator is the biggest circle on the Earth and the Earth is rotating about its axis. So that means that even before the rocket is launched, when it's sitting on that platform, it's already moving because it's on the equator. The equator is rotating with the Earth about its axis and the rocket is already moving with a velocity of 463 meters per second. It already has some of the kinetic energy, actually 15% of the kinetic energy that it needs to go into geostationary orbit above the Earth. Because when it's in geostationary orbit, it needs to be moving at about 3,000 meters per second. So if they take that rocket out to the equator and launch it from the equator, they already have some energy and therefore some cost savings. All right, so that's why they do that. Also, they want to launch into geostationary orbit. It needs to be above the equator, and they're at the equator, so they're closer to the orbital position of that rocket. It's easier to do from the equator. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to determine, as we said earlier, this UTEL satellite 70B. Okay, this satellite was one of the last satellites launched in 2012 by sea launch, and we are going to determine the energy needed to put that UTEL satellite 70B, that telecommunications satellite, into geostationary orbit. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to determine the change in the energy of that satellite. When the change in the energy is defined as the final energy minus the initial energy, and the final energy and the initial energy, that's the total mechanical energy. And the total mechanical energy is the sum of the potential and the kinetic energy. So we're going to have to, for the final and for the initial, calculate the potential and kinetic energy and add them up and then find the difference to determine the energy needed to put that satellite into orbit. And we're going to do that right now, step by step. We are going to finish, find the initial energy first, and we're going to find the initial potential energy first, and this is the equation we use to calculate the initial potential energy. It's minus g. g is the gravitational constant times the mass of one of the objects times the mass of the other object divided by the distance between those two objects. The mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to 24 kilograms. The mass of the satellite is 5,210 kilograms, and because that satellite initially is sitting at the surface of the Earth or on the surface of the Earth, R is simply the radius or the distance from the center of the Earth out to the satellite, which is the radius of the Earth, and the radius of the Earth is 6,371 kilometers. Now we can just plug those values into our equation. The initial potential energy is minus, please don't forget this minus sign is minus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meter squared kilogram squared. I didn't have room to put all the units on, times the mass of the Earth, times the mass of the satellite, both of those in kilograms, and then the distance from the satellite to the center of the Earth has to be in meters. This is 6,371 kilometers. 6,371 times 10 to the third will be in meters. This constant has the units of kilograms, newtons, kilograms squared, and meters squared, and therefore, 
This has to be, the masses have to be in kilograms and the distance has to be in meters. Do that math and you get that the initial potential energy when the rocket, excuse me, when the satellite is at the surface of the Earth, the initial potential energy of the satellite is minus 3.26 times 10 to the 11th joules. Now we can figure out the kinetic energy, the initial kinetic energy. We know kinetic energy is one half mv squared. I told you already what the initial velocity is or the velocity of the rocket when it's sitting, the satellite when it's sitting on the surface of the Earth. It's actually rotating and this is how I calculated that. The velocity is the distance divided by the time. Now it's on the Earth's surface. The Earth is rotating. It's at the equator, that's a circle. The circumference, the distance traveled is the circumference of the equator, which is 2 pi r. That's the equation for the circumference of a circle divided by the time it takes for the Earth to go once around on its axis. And you get that that is equal to 2 times 6,371 times 10 to the third meters. That's the radius of the Earth divided by the period. Now, the period is 24 hours, 60 minutes, and 60 seconds, and you get that the rocket is actually moving with a velocity of about 463 meters per second, and we can calculate its kinetic energy, just plug those values in, and the rocket, when it's sitting on the surface of the Earth and rotating with the Earth, is actually moving and has a kinetic energy, an initial kinetic energy of 5.59 times 10 to the eighth joules. Now we can just add those two values up, the initial potential, the initial kinetic, to get the total mechanical energy, the total initial mechanical energy, and that comes out to be minus 3.25 times 10 to the 11 joules. You'll notice this is 10 to the 11, and this is only 10 to the 8, so there's a significant um, difference in those two values, order of magnitude, so you just lose a little bit and you get 3.25 times 10 to the 11th minus for the initial uh, uh, mechanical energy of the satellite when it's sitting on the surface of the Earth. Now we can figure out the total mechanical energy of the satellite when it's in geostationary orbit about the Earth. We're going to once again find the potential and the kinetic and add them up. The potential, the same equation, minus g times m1 times m2 divided by the distance between them. The mass of the Earth is the same. The mass of the satellite is the same. But the distance is different because now the satellite is orbiting the Earth in geostationary orbit. And in order to do that, it needs to be 35,793 kilometers above the Earth's surface. And that means the radius of the satellite's orbit about the Earth is the radius of the Earth plus the height above the Earth's surface. And that means that R, when the satellite is in orbit around the Earth in geostationary orbit, the radius is 42,164 kilometers. Once again, we can just plug our values in. Minus, don't forget the minus sign again, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. The mass of the Earth is the same. The mass of the satellite is the same. The distance, once again, has to be in meters. That's 4.21, or you could put 4.2164 times 10 to the seventh meters. And that means when it's in geostationary orbit, the potential energy of the satellite is minus 4.94 times 10 to the 10th joules. That's the potential energy. Now we're going to get the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy, once again, is 1 half mv squared. Now we could calculate uh, the separately or kind of separately the orbital velocity of the satellite. This is the equation that we would use to calculate the orbital velocity, but there's a very interesting kind of relationship here between the potential and the kinetic energy final. This is V squared. This is V. I'm going to take this term and substitute it in for this velocity. And if I have a square root and I square it, then I'm just left with gmr divided by r. And I substitute that in and you'll notice that I get that the final kinetic energy is one half. This is the mass of the satellite. This is the mass of the Earth. This is the radius. And G is still there also. So I get G basically M1 times M2 divided by R. You'll notice that this equation is the same equation we use to calculate the potential energy. And that means that the final kinetic energy is just one half the final potential energy. Very interesting. 
Now we can calculate that relatively easily because we know the potential energy. We calculated that already. We're going to just take half of that, 0 0.5 times 4.94 times 10 to the 10th. This is the final potential energy we calculated on the previous slide. When we get the kinetic energy, we just use the positive value, the absolute value of the potential energy term. And that means that the final kinetic energy when that satellite is in geostationary orbit about the Earth is 2.47 times 10 to the 10th joules. Now we have both the final values and we can just add them up together. If we add them up, the final potential plus the final kinetic, you get that the final total mechanical energy is minus 2.47 times 10 to the 10th joules. Okay, now maybe you noticed this, or I think this is a very interesting uh, relationship between the kinetic and the potential. It's worth mentioning here, kind of as an aside. We said that the total mechanical energy final is potential plus kinetic, obviously. Okay, we calculated the potential using the equation, and then when we calculated the kinetic energy, we found that the kinetic energy is just half of the potential energy. That's what we did on the previous slide. Now, this is a whole value, then we have half, and that means that the final energy, the final mechanical energy, is just one half of the potential energy. All right? So we didn't really have to calculate that. If you want, kind of can't remember that from the previous slide, you can go back and see that. But the final energy is just one half the final potential energy. Okay? And you can see that this is 4.94. Take half of that away, and you're left with half. You remember the final is also negative, though. Okay? So now we can go on. We know the initial. We know the total final. And now we can just take the difference of those two. Remember the difference is always the final minus the initial. Now we have a lot of negative signs here, so keep your negative sign straight. Don't forget a negative sign, but the change in the energy, the final potential energy was minus or negative 2.47 times 10 to the 10th joules minus this minus sign is this minus sign. This is the minus sign. This is the negative sign because the initial potential energy, the initial energy total was also negative minus 2.5 times 10 to the 11th. Minus a minus is a plus. And if you do that math, you get the change in the energy is plus or positive 3.00 times 10 to the 11th joules. Okay, that's a lot of joules. And in fact, that is 300 gigajoules. And that's just the energy needed to launch the satellite into geostationary orbit. That's not the energy to get the rocket up there also with it, to go through the Earth's atmosphere. We're not taking into account the um, friction from the Earth's atmosphere. That's just the energy to launch the satellite into geostationary orbit. Okay, there you go. We did all of that. We had to get two kinetics, two potentials, add them together, find the difference for the final, and the initial to get the change in energy and the energy needed to launch that satellite. Please, if you found that helpful, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a thumbs up, a nice positive comment in the comment section below, and do not forget that sharing is caring. Share this video with your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.